Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Girl Space Program 1.12. In this video I'm going to examine what happens when you take the second stage of Saturn V, normally filled with hydrogen and oxygen and sporting 5J2 engines, and turn it into a third stage replacing the S4B stage, filling it just with hydrogen and fitting a nuclear engine like Nerva on it. It's not exactly going to be Nerva, but it's going to be close enough for our purposes. So yeah, that is the idea. I'm surprised I had not had a video on it before on my channel, but I searched my channel and unless it's named something totally weird, it doesn't seem like I've done it here, though I'm sure I have used this setup in live streams before for payloads and maybe it featured in the course of the Solar System Tourism series, but it wasn't a standalone video. So we're going to try this out and this is what it looks like. And for now, we are just using normal F1 engines and a normal J2 engines, and we'll have upgrades later on. And our payload is uh, tentatively uh, currently uh, 75 tons, almost 75 tons. We'll separate it off to verify. And it's actually a pass-through hab, and this will allow me to also test the pass-through system in 1.12. So we'll put some kerbals in and we're gonna have them float about and see whether that works out. But I suspect it won't because they'll be consuming nitrogen as their EVA propellant and that'll go by way too quickly for it to work for the pass-through system. But we'll see how it all works out. And I remember there being some other issues as well, so we will see, we will see. So the idea is to launch the 75 tons over to the moon. So it's not a paying out around Earth sort of thing. Ultimately, we would like to be able to refuel the stage in orbit, so we'll have a docking port and have it be refuelable and do other things. But uh, So it'll be a reusable upper stage, but is it worth it is a good question, and that is what we are here to examine. And also, given its 20 minute burn time, it's got to be a little bit of a difficult thing to loft it and make sure it actually gets to orbit. And does it have enough to actually manage the 75 tons? Well, you know, we're already less than 75 tons. Maybe we'll go for 70. Let's be a little bit modest here. As far as the tankage mass is concerned, by the way, I checked it against a procedural tank. Conventional structure aluminum lithium procedural tank has exactly the same dry mass as this. It's about 28 tons dry. For some reason, the dry masses aren't showing up for me here. And that's for every part. And the wet masses tend to be incorrect. So... Uh, it, basically the wet mass is only the fuel and not including the dry mass so the stage is heavier than it's indicating here actually let's do that let's take a look uh, I hope I get the nodes right eventually uh, so we've got a 70 ton payload there it's basically hundred and forty two tons okay I've rearranged this a little bit so that we have the tank for the RCS at the top here and so now this is dockable so that we can potentially reuse this stage. And I just want to verify that we get the right size again for our payload. And then we'll go. So we've got sort of an interesting setup here. I wish I could make the mount a little bit smaller though. But ultimately, maybe I'll make a custom part. The Saturn instrument unit also is sort of heavy compared to, let's say, modern stuff. Though, you know, then if we're talking about Saturn V, are, really, are, are we really talking about modern stuff? Not, not exactly. So, anyway, we are all set up. Let's take it outside. Well, unfortunately, we are launching at nighttime. Also, it bears noting that the plumes on these engines will still be real plumes. Anyway, ignition. So no engine light effect, I don't think. And launch. Um, it looks like we don't have enough particles on smokescreen. I finally got the Blizzy's toolbar so that we can access smokescreen and get the rest of the particles. Look at all the smoke. Anyway. Off we go. And the key here is we're probably going to have to loft it a little bit higher than Saturn V normally goes in order to accommodate the nuclear engine. Okay, center engine cutout. I thought we have a whole lot left. This was set up to Apollo 11 standards, so... It's possible that we could be carrying more fuel than what we have here. This is just Apollo 11 standards. And... Let's... 
couple. I think we're high enough to get rid of the fairings as well. Oh, I forgot to put the kerbals in the seeds. Uh, we'll do that on the next run then. It is passed through, so they have to be in command chairs. They don't automatically get filled. Uh, oh, we're draining hydrogen from this. Great. Uh, I think we have severe boil off on this. It's uh, maybe a little bit too much. We're losing. We're losing half a ton per hour. <laughs> so. Um, Hold on a sec. Uh, yeah, let's get the kerbals in and maybe toss some MLI layers. There's got to be some insulation on a stage like that. Okay, so we have a number of changes. I did put the MLI layers to hopefully control the boil off. And I also decided to upgrade the engines to what they used at the end of the Apollo program, not the beginning. We had the Apollo 11 versions before. And I also filled up the S1C stage so it has more fuel. And we're going to have to loft it up a little bit better. Uh, and make sure that the nuclear stage has enough time to reach orbit and we have kerbals in so with all of that we are going to launch in daylight we'll just try for a uh, moon equivalent orbit instead of actually hitting the moon unless I can manage an off-plane transfer we'll see so SAS on throttle is up and ignition so we're at uh, 3010 tons which is more like what they had close to the end of the Apollo program rather than 2900 which is what they had at the beginning and we are going up, you know, sedately, as Saturn V does. Now we can envision further systems after this, of course. I really need to update the nuclear stage for the Kasei rocket in particular. It would be nice to have a much more standard, refuelable, large nuclear stage. So far we've been somewhat haphazard. I've been using the NTP designs from NASA for a lot of stuff. You've seen the NTP tanks if you've seen my previous videos or the To Mars and Beyond series or stuff like that. That happens all the time. And those are fine, but they're not really... They're, they're a stage meant to go to Mars and back. And they have sort of built-in stuff, like the RCS and all. But not exactly in the configuration that I want them to be in. They're not, they're not any heavier than this, I don't think. Proportionally speaking. But they're meant to be sent up by a different launcher. They're meant to be sent up and in fact to high orbit by SLS so that's a different sort of setup but what is our baseline launcher is it Kasei is it like super heavy right that would determine the kind of stage we end up making okay first stage set second stage and let's get rid of the skirt and we'll wait till 100 kilometers for the fairings Got the weirdness with the UI still. It's not showing, when I expand the things, it's not showing the rest of the objects. Really, we should put on some radiators and such as well. Most likely, the stage would look a lot different than a bare bones S2. Though, it probably wouldn't have actual gold foil on it like with the MLI layers, but you can see the boil off loss. It, uh, we had like 400 kilograms per hour before, which is just insane. Now we have a fraction of a kilogram per hour, and I only put 10 layers on. In fact, even one layer would have probably done enough for what we need. It was just way out of line before. Uh, I don't know what analytic cooling is. Maybe that's like active cooling, but I'm not sure. Right now, we don't have any of that. Okay, fairings. Probably laid on that. Okay, off they go. Okay, we have finished that stage. And separation and ignition. Okay, there we go. Um... 
The RCS boards seem like they might be misconfigured here based on the ISP. That's probably not the most critical thing right now. Let's decouple that off. Okay. So here we go. And let's see. Hopefully we have enough time to do this. We did loft a little bit higher than Saturn V normally does. I mean, it's looking like we have plenty of extra and could carry a heavier payload right now, but we have to keep this angle, otherwise we won't have enough time, so it's a little bit tough to say. Okay, we are making orbit. And that's good enough for me. We have 500 meters per second more than we need to transfer to the moon. Uh, let's just see an off-plane transfer. I do want to see what the moon looks like around here. Um, we should have enough food, water, and oxygen for the Kerbals and everything. So we'll try and get there, even though it's going to take longer. Okay, uh, 12 days, so quite long. But yeah, you can see the 500 meters per second we have extra. And we do have far more than 12 days worth of food, water, and oxygen. So let's try it out, even though the RCS on this stage is not currently working right. Oh, uh, we don't have much power though, that's another problem. I didn't really put solar panels on here, did I? Oops, and we passed a node. Okay, maybe we shouldn't try this. Uh, we'll, we'll try on the next launch when we have things fixed a little bit. Let me try the pass-through system right now. And then we'll worry about the other bits later. So, we have some Kerbals in here. Uh, tough to get a good look at them. And there's one. All right, command chair, Bob Kerman, all right. Well, Bob C does not seem to have any food, water, and oxygen on him right now. You better be sure that that's okay. And electric charge will be good too. But what about EVA propellant? Now we've got the little jet pack. We'll have to see whether that works properly or not. That is, in fact, the big test. Okay, so, leave seat. So now, if we go in, how quickly does that propellant... See, it's nitrogen propellant. They've changed it with realism overhaul. Now, I may or may not have sort of fixed it. Oh, there's the blurriness effect from... Okay, he's just rotating. <laughs> Can can SAS actually do something? Hmm. Yeah, from uh, KS3P, I need to turn off the blurriness. But that nitrogen is probably going to be used too quickly for us to actually do anything here. I mean, get useful stuff done. I don't know why the orientation isn't working right, right? I mean, normally they orient to view, or they used to. Right now, that's not happening. Maybe I've got a thing turned off, but... Yeah, he's just rotating around and around without any control. So I don't know what they've changed about that. Maybe somebody else knows. I, I haven't used 1.12 very much, but... I do think that uh, Bob is in at risk of perishing here, so... That's not good, because I can't control his rotation. I better try my best to get him into the seat again. But that might be tough. I mean, as, as something is using thruster power consistently, isn't it? Because I'm not pressing anything, and he's still moving forward. Um, the throttle seems to be up, but the throttle ought not to be here. Okay, maybe if we reset it. No, it automatically goes full throttle. Why is that? My throttle is down right now. My physical throttle. So I don't know why it's on full throttle constantly. And I'm not pressing any button, and I don't have throttle up, and nitrogen is being used even though SAS is not on. Why is that? 
So we have a dangerous situation here, folks, and I need answers. Um, uh, there's an un this is basically Gemini 8 just with a jetpack. We have an uncontrolled roll and we have no way of stopping this thing. Um, when I turn off RCS, the throttle goes down. Again, no throttle lever is up. Oh, now, now it's not. Hmm. No, now, now it went up again. Once I pressed E for one time, now it's all. Okay, we're probably gonna have to revert this because Rob is gonna die otherwise. So yeah, so that's the question. This I I had problems with EVA previously in 1.12, which is one reason I didn't upgrade because things were not working right. This was not exactly what wasn't working right. This uh, this seems different, but. If somebody has any ideas, this is pretty critical to using 1.12 going forward that we are able to have them EVA properly. But, alright, right now what I'm going to do is try full force and see what kind of payload to orbit we get. So we'll use the F1As instead of just the upgraded F1s. So that'll provide much more thrust. And we might be able to increase the size of this stage. Uh, we'll have J2S's as well. Take a look at Delta V stats. It's not six minutes anymore because those J2S's have... And we should just dump all the fuel and oxidizer and reset that. Okay. Uh, it's still not six minutes. That's the best we can do unless we increase the size of the stage, which we won't do for now. And so with that, the question is whether we can get a heavier payload over to the moon. With the upgraded engines, I'll try for 82 tons to the moon. And we will see if that works. Okay, now also with solar panels, here we go. SAS on, throttle is up, ignition. And launch. And again, we have to fix the particle count. So, one problem with uh, smoke screen and real plumes is that I keep having to change the particle count. It needs to be able to keep that. Maybe, maybe that's what everybody's frustrated with. They don't realize that or something. And they think real plumes looks horrible because of that. Alright, separation, ignition. And yeah, why don't we do skirt step at the same time as the fairings? Now, if we're worried about igniting the nuclear stage in order to complete orbit, we can have a secondary propulsion system to complete orbit. That'll be an added mass, but it can be done. So, we'll just add a ring of extra small engines. Amounting to the same thrust and some additional tanks that will cut out of our payload capacity though we could take it out of the hydrogen here that we would use for propelling to orbit so it's interesting how that might actually balance out won't be as efficient but we could see I am aware of the Comet super heavy launch vehicle the HLLV that was from the early 90s. It would have had special fuel tanks but based on the Saturn V and it would start out with uh, basically F1A core plus boosters that each had two F1As and then J2S's and then but baseline it had basically an S4B stage for translunar injection so just uh, another J2S but Maybe we could put a nuclear stage on that. I think they had that idea. And then see how that works. So, we may expand upon this and just go for the Comet HLLV version. Or maybe we should put methane engines on that one instead. I mean, kerosene oxygen is a bit done at this point, isn't it? I don't know. All right, separation and ignition. We'll allow that. 
Any of these thrusters actually working now? I'm not sensing that. I, I, we didn't lock the fuel. But neither of these nor those in the back seem to actually be doing anything. They're not using the fuel. So I think maybe the the Saturn instrument unit just doesn't crossfeed at all. Maybe that's why. We will just rebuild this stage so that we can get it working properly. I mean, really, it looks like the engine was meant for this sort of thing. Okay, trying to round it out here, but it's not easy. We are going down. I let it uh, start going down, but we need to catch ourselves here. So here there's been no expansion to this tank, it's the same volume as the S2 stage, that's part of the attraction I suppose. I'm sort of doing this for completeness sake because I was surprised I hadn't done it already. Well it is a long trip to orbit I can tell you, we're pushing 17 minutes here but we are successfully rounding it out. And we have enough to transfer over, so about 82 tons, maybe a little bit more, but not a whole lot more. And that's good enough. Alright, so 294 by 197 or so, and enough to transfer. Let's just verify. Alright, well, let's get the solar panels out, and we'll have to use the RCS on the pass-through space hab in order to actually orient. So let's do that. I mean, I guess it's just that the instrument unit doesn't allow cross-feeding. I could just toggle that, but it's easier to make a sp special part instead of messing with this one. But the UI issues are weird. That's... Uh, the Because of all this business, the maneuver markers disappeared. Now, if I add a new stage here... No, that doesn't help. I, like, I don't know what will help the situation. Okay. To see if if I expand these, it disappears. But if I contract these, it reappears. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. Okay, ignition. Well, we're a little bit late because it takes a while to ignite this. Okay, and. Shut down, let's not wander too much. And we just about make it. Uh, well, we need to refine that a little bit, looks like. Uh, maybe. Oh, uh, well, it looks like it, we went too far. Uh, you know what? For our purposes right now, it doesn't matter how close we get. <laughs> I'm just going to decree this. And we are just going to go ahead and undock and push forward. And we'll take a look at the moon haphazardly. Okay, so we are free. This is 80 was 82 tons before we just pushed forward there. And let's go over to the moon. Okay, well, all right. It's a little bit far away. I don't know how much our RCS can do for us. Okay, this is taking too darn long. We should have fit engines if you wanted to do this. Okay, that's fine. Let's just take what look at the moon we can. We'll certainly get a full view of it. Let's see, that's Earth. And that's the moon. Oh, it gets blurry because of KS3P though. While we're time warping. Maybe not because of KS3P, but... Uh, I'm not getting any sense it's going to be any different anyway. So... Maybe at lower levels, but right now this will do for now. This has been a test of the Saturn V rocket with a hydrogen NTR stage. And it looks like we can get about 82 tons to the moon as long as we upgraded the first stage and second stage to the upgrades that they had planned. So we will see in the future whether I want to... I, th I definitely want to make a formalized uh, hydrogen stage I've wanted to for some time larger than the NTP tanks that we have with the NASA system but I don't know what launcher I want to use with them necessarily 
so we'll see. And we need a proper refueler too, so I've been working on that in the Two Mars and Beyond series, but that's sized to the Orion carrier plane specifically, which is small, right? That has a very limited capacity, and so it's a different thing than having the a full capacity thing for either SLS, Starship, or something like that. So, yeah. But can I make something common? That's a little bit tricky. It is possible to have a common upper stage for SLS and Starship, for instance. But, especially with methane. But for hydrogen, it's tough because SLS can take a much larger volume of hydrogen than Starship can. It just doesn't have the space. So, that's a consideration. Or, and then there's the whole other possibility of a Saturn-derived vehicle, of course. The Comet HLLV. And that'll be a kerosene oxygen option for the initial stages instead of methane or hydrogen plus boosters. So these are all things floating around. So anyway, uh, but we have tested out the initial premise and that, that was an interesting idea. Unfortunately, of course, in the 60s and 70s did not come to pass with Nerva. And here we are still hoping that eventually NTRs will be developed, but we will see. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.